Josh Gowling joins me now after what's been a long but short but interesting season, to say the least, for Hereford. But we're going to kick off with some team news and I'm going to let Josh introduce a new signing. Well, new but old, yeah. So we, um, yeah, Tom O'Nevin, so he's, he's agreed to kind of stay on for us for next season, which is um, a real boost for us. Obviously, we spoke um, at length. Obviously, I spoke to all you guys as well about trying to keep as much of the squad together we can. And, you know, toby has been an integral part of the team this year with his goals and his assists. And um, I'm just delighted that we've um, finally got that over the line. How, how, how much convincing did it take to get Not in? much. I'd, I'd like to think the majority of the lads um, will want to stay. I think we've had um, a relative season this year. I think they've enjoyed it. Um, and you know they've bought into the philosophy, the ideas that we we want to bring to the football club, and you know the club's in a good place. I would say at the moment, and I think the lads can feel that, and and you know they're the reason why the club's in a good place. So I think they want to continue. You know after the final, obviously on the on the twenty second, we've got unfinished business, and um, so we need to make sure we have a better season um, next season. Definitely so. And as I said at the start, it's been long but short, but a very interesting season at least. Um, but for yourself and Steve to sign on as well, that must give the team a bit of confidence. Yeah, I think the lads were looking at um, what was going on with myself and obviously Steve as well and um, what we were doing before they were kind of going to make decisions. We we'd, we'd spoke to the lads obviously before we knew what we were doing regarding contract wise um, and saying we wanted to keep them here, um, the majority of them. So, you know, that was for us, it was pretty much a given that, you know, a bulk of the squad would stay. Obviously, there's been interest in the lads and some of the lads from other clubs and, and we'll see how that develops over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, I mean, we're delighted, you know, as I've said, you know, it's, it's not a quick fix. Um, I, I know we've turned things around pretty quickly in a short space of time, but you know, I see this football club as a long-term project um, to get back to, you know, the football league and that's not going to happen overnight. And, you know, I'm glad that, you know, we've spoke, sat down as a board um, with myself and then obviously Steve as well. And, and we've agreed that, you know, this is a project that we need to build. So obviously committing to myself for two years was um, something I was really pleased about. And the team's already played in some quite high pressure games together as a unit. Yeah. And yourself and Steve have managed them through that. So going into next season, what are the team targets, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, you know, I spoke to the lads. We spoke on the pitch after the game straight away because that's the way I am. Obviously, I was devastated. And to be honest, it's been the worst five days of my life, to be honest. But, um, you know, we spoke about the pressures of the day. And, you know, maybe that took a little toll, I think, in the second half, possibly. You know, obviously, we deviated from the game plan second half, which um, was frustrating. I think we need... Um, a kind of, you know, we've lost all our experience. Play. If you actually look at the squad from the start of the season to now, we've probably lost the core of experience. And so I think that needs to be replaced. I think that that would have made a big difference on on Saturday. I think they had a quite an experienced squad and they, they knew how to manage the game probably a little bit better than some of our younger players. But, um, you know, we've looked at it and, you know, we, we the, the pressure, you know, I said to the lads, you know, look at, feel this pressure and then imagine a league game. And it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? So, you know, I, I I was fortunate and unfortunate in the sense that I, I went to a playoff final, lost it um, with with Grimsby. And then the next year we went and won the final. So, you know, it, 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 that's what I've said to the lads. You know, we now need to reframe this, um, take loads of positives from it, take the fact that we played in such a high pressure environment and go into the league next year and, you know, improve on on, on this season. And that's that's going to be the plan to build on this, the, the, you know, the season just gone. I think we've got momentum now and we need to keep improving now, uh, you know, and that and, and that will obviously improve with some additions to the squad. Um, you know, obviously currently the budget is the same as last year, uh, which, which I spoke about at length. And, you know, we've, we've been it hard, probably harder than a lot of the football clubs regarding the payments and stuff. So it's going to be difficult again to... You know, we recruited quite well this year, I'd like to think. Um, but again, it's going to be another, it's probably going to be a harder task this year to try and get that experience in for the budget that we've got. And, you know, like I said, this year, we've been fortunate enough that a couple of players have pretty much played for free, uh, which has been fantastic. And, and that just shows the environment, but we're going to have to do it again. Simple of as course, that. Of course. Keeping on to the positives to watch Tomo and Evans score, not only at Wembley, but in front of fans as well. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we were we were delighted because obviously we worked on that set play <laughs> quite a bit um, during the thingy and for Toei to score, you know, he's been 
He's been a bit of a tal- talisman for us this season, hasn't he? You know, obviously when Lenny left, you know, I think the fans were looking around thinking, you know, where the goal's going to come from. And Toei stepped into that mantle. Obviously, Bukayo scored a few and, and you know, Toei's been excellent. He's gone from strength to strength. I think he's found his feet. I think cons- consistent performances um, and consistent playing consistently has really benefited Toei. And, you know, obviously going into next season, as long as he um, performs properly in pre-season and does the right things, then he'll have another consistent run next season. And it's, you know, he's a big part of what we're doing. Could we see him nick the captain's armband from Hodgkiss? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I think Tommy just needs, I think Tommy needs another year um, to really find his feet, to find out who he is as a player. I think he's getting there now. I think he's starting to understand his strengths and weaknesses now. You know, if you give someone like Tommy the captaincy, that kind of, I wouldn't say it stunts his progression, but then he starts worrying about other players and trying to organise a team and do all that stuff. And it probably takes away from him. Whereas, you know, your captain is probably really well-rounded and, and already knows himself and he's experienced. I mean, don't get me wrong, Toei's definitely experienced, but um, I want Toei to concentrate on his game and have another successful season and do better than he's done this year. Definitely, definitely. What can we expect to see from from... I don't know the the preseason leading up to next season, and what what sort of the the strategies leading up to that? Less trialists. <laughs> 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 so um, no, um, a, te- a team sheet we can name. <laughs> yeah, it will be. It won't be trialists A, B, C, or one, two, three, four, five. There will actually be some signed players. So um, no, we're, we're you know we're going to keep a core of the squad together. That's for sure. Obviously, we'll, we'll look to bring in some additions. Some players will probably move on that, you know, we probably would want to keep. But because of budget, we can't. So, um, you know, some fans will be happy with that. Some weren't, I'm sure. But no, what we want to do, we want to get a lot of friendly, friendly games in. Um, you know, I like staggering the minutes to get the lads' fitness levels up. Um, so, you know, it will be look like that. But what we want is a steady pre-season. Last year, we didn't. Like I said, we had a lot of trialists in and we probably, it took us probably six games into the season to find really six, seven, eight games into the season to find our feet, um, which is, which I don't want. No manager wants that. So, you know, what what I do want is a bit more of a steady um, pre-season where there's a lot more engagement with the fans. I think it's important. Um, I've spoken to the club at length about social media. Um, obviously, because of the pandemic, it didn't quite happen this year. But what I do want is... Um, a lot more engagement with the players and the fans. So a lot more videos, a lot more content put out from the football club to, you know, I'd like to think the fans are starting to know the players now, but I'd, I'd like a lot more engagement um, from that side of things from the football club. So I expect a lot more of that. And that's only going to get even better with the fingers crossed, the return of fans to Edgar Street. And the, the, the I was going to say the pressure that it might put on the team, but actually the enjoyment of having 2,000 Hereford faithful cheering the team on? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for me, like when we're looking at recruitment, is bringing in lads that are used to playing in high-pressure environments. I think that's one of the big things I want to take away from Saturday. Um, we had, obviously, Dan Dan Jones, um, Jake Wright for a period, Giles Coke, um, Lenal John Lewis. Now, they were four key parts of the, the, the team, in a sense. Um, and they're used to that those big occasions. Now the lads have been absolutely fantastic all the way through it. Um, but if we can add uh, a couple of additions to help them through it, especially the younger players, to guide them through a little bit more, then you know that's the, the, that, that's what we want to do. But I I can't wait to be honest. I can't wait to play the way we play in front of those fans on a consistent basis, beating teams week in week out. Seeing the, the the fans turn up in their droves and, and cheering on the um, the boys, they deserve it. They deserve it this season, and you know they they got it for one well three games, I suppose. Um, but you know one big game at the end of the season. But you know we just won that on a consistent basis because it will really help our season. And final question: Are there any personal targets for yourself going into the new season? Um, yes, I've always got targets. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the biggest thing for me is um, developing the players. I'd like to think there's been an improvement um, with, with the lads that were here before I, before I took over. Um, and I just want to keep developing, to be honest. I want to develop, obviously, myself, my personal skills, um, my managing skills, but I want to develop the players more. Um, you know, I've got, obviously, realistic targets, you know, win, lose, win losses, draws, um, all that kind of stuff. I've, I've got those, um, which I won't share with you or bore you with. But, um, yeah, but for me, it's just... 
again, it's a progression. I, I just want to keep this ball rolling. I, I want the positivity to stay around the football club. I want the engagement. For me, the biggest thing for me is the engagement with the fans. Um, that's been lost along the way. Um, and that, for me, the biggest target for me this season is, you know, one of the, obviously, you want to win as many games as you can. But from a football club point of view, is to really drive this club forward and get the disconnect between, you know, the fans, board, players. I want it to be one football club. And by the end of the season, I want this football club to be one football club, pulling in the right direction, everyone singing off the same hymn sheet, everybody happy with each other. Um, no fractures within, you know, the groups that are around the football club. And I just want it to be pulling in in one direction. You know, we have spoke about, I've spoke about um, getting the, the fans engaged more with some decisions made at the football club. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll have that pushing forward soon um, because, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in the fans' voice. Um, happy fans, happy club. So, you know, we, we will be looking to do that. But that's probably the biggest thing for me is, is, is getting the club um, all pulling in the same direction. Well, the club's definitely put Hereford back on the map, especially from this season and uh, getting to Wembley as well. But Josh, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you for your time today. No problem. Cheers.